All right, okay, here's a, a bozo alert. And so let's, I'm going to just show you a couple of seconds here. Hi, my name is Mike, and in today's video, um, I wanted to share a link to a video called Christians Who Ended Up in Hell Because of Willful Sin. The hell okay, so Christians Who Ended Up in Hell Because of Willful Sin. I, as death came over me, I felt everything become dark, and I found myself walking through a dark tunnel, and there was some kind of being that was taking me, while we walked in this cold and dark tunnel. Alright, so that's enough. Alright, so the idea is that a Christian can go to hell because of willful sin. Now that's utterly ridiculous on multiple levels all right so once you are born of the Spirit of God you have everlasting life in you you shall not perish but have everlasting life you there's no way at all that you can end up in hell and it's not even close. And oh, I know what I did wrong. So in Luke 16, uh, if you're familiar, it's about the Lazarus, the poor guy, and the rich guy. And there's a great gulf fixed between the two of them. And the one, the rich guy that was saved was in hell all right so if you understand that he says send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame and Abraham said no and beside all this between us and you there is a great gulf fix so there's a there's no way for you to even enter into that realm after death it's not possible all right and then on top of that because of willful sin um, that is putting people back under the law all right and that's warned uh, against uh, many times here if I could find a a verse that would complement that here the law talks to them that are under the law that the, all the world may become guilty before God and that's why we need a Savior we are not under the law but we are under grace because we are not under the law but under grace should we sin then no God forbid For we know the law is spiritual, but I am car carnal, sold under sin. All right, so there's just numerous verses that um, talk about how we that are saved are no longer under the law. Now the law is there to be our schoolmaster to lead us to faith in Christ. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Alright, so it's wrong to sin. It's never okay to sin, whether you're saved or unsaved. But if you are born of God the Spirit of God in you can never sin so we have the Spirit of God working in us helping us to overcome the sins of our life and what's that verse again I forget already um, let me find it real quick see if I can Let's work backwards. That the man of God may be 
perfect. All right, so am I not remembering that right? Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, Second Timothy 3, verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So what's the context? All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correct, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And so we can be confident knowing that the Spirit of God is in us, being confident of this very thing that He which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So we are no longer under the law, so you can sin willy-nilly, but you're going to pay the price more so that it, even if you're not, if you were not saved. But if you're not saved, it's still wrong to sin. Your eternal punishment is far greater than our punishment which is temporary because all of the errors of our life will be cut off and and uh, so if we do make a mistake God knows it and he's gonna convict us of it and the father chasteneth and oh my goodness what is that verse he chasteneth and scourges every son that he receives. See if I can even come close to this. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourges every son whom he receive. It is a fearful thing to come into the hands of God. So when we are saved, first of all, it doesn't make any sense to me to want to sin anymore. The reason why I, I, I wanted to... Uh, you know, be saved because I, you know, when I wanted, when I realized I couldn't do it myself, and the reason I came to the Lord Jesus Christ is because I didn't want to sin anymore, and I just can't do it on my own. My only hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ, because I can't do it myself. And so, this idea, well, if you sin willfully you're going to hell oh so if I accidentally cheat on my wife that's okay but if I willfully cheat on my wife I'm going to hell now that's stupid that's what the, I mean if they're being honest that's what they're teaching it's okay to accidentally sin whoops I accidentally murdered somebody I accidentally cheated on my wife I accidentally this and that and whatever no there is no whoopsie sin if you sin, you sin. And if you're born of God, the Spirit will convict you. And we that are saved know and understand that pretty good, I think. Because we don't want to sin. We don't ever want to sin. And But it's in our nature to sin. So there is a battle going on. There's a constant struggle to deal with our flesh but we can have confidence in the Lord that he is working in us and will continue to work in us until the day of redemption. All right? Pretty simple stuff. Now, don't listen to these ridiculous phony balonies, okay? They couldn't tell you what the gospel was if they had it right in front of their face. Come on.